Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Chasing Dreams podcast. Today we have Ms. Ness Monet and we are talking about perseverance. She is a blogger, a social influencer, and a brand ambassador. And she has taken the scenic route, which is the name of her blog, but all puns intended. Um, in her childhood years, she had a vision of how her life would be, would be when she became an adult. And I think we all can relate to that list when we grow up. Flash forward to the present day, and her life is the complete opposite of what she envisioned. She's on a journey to fully embrace the life she has and letting go of the life she thought she would have. She's not where she wants to be yet, and until she gets there, she's enjoying the scenery. In short, she's just a single queen trying to see the world and survive with fibromyalgia, NCTD, and anxiety, all while self healing. Welcome to the podcast, love. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited for being here. Thank you for this opportunity. Yes. And one of my favorite facts about you, she is my beloved soul. I'm sick. We get right uh, uh, Ready? <laughs> yes, yes. Three uh, poodles. Whoop, whoop. Okay. <laughs> poodles out here doing the thing. Yeah. All right. Period. <laughs> okay. And that's on Mary Lou and the crew. Okay. Yes, on everybody. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I, like, I like to start off the conversation by just asking, what what is the dream for you? That is honestly a good question. I feel like it changes every day. Um, I think for right now in this moment, I think my number one thing is to embrace my health conditions that I have, which I'm sure we'll get in mm-hmm. um, get into throughout this uh, podcast. It really affects every aspect of my life, and it has completely changed my life in every way. So I'm really trying to embrace it physically and mentally. Mm-hmm. And then once I kind of get that under control, I'm of course trying to chase my social um, influencer slash blogger dreams and really work with brands and continue to put myself out there with content and then i'm also looking to get my llc and start a business around government contracting around sexual health and hiv nice 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 um so when did you realize the dream and how has it changed over the years um I feel like for my social influencer blogging dream, I would say I realized it in 2015. And this was really before Instagram became what Instagram is. And <laughs> get all of these deals, honey, and get all this coin, get all this money. I just love taking pictures. I don't necessarily really love telling my story, even though that's a lot of what my blog is centered around. But what I do love is helping other people. And as Black women, so shout out to all the Black women listening to this podcast right now, we suffer in silence too much. And I really wanted to break that. Um, My undergraduate degree is actually in social work. So really healing and helping people, motivating people is at the core of me. So I thought by sharing my story and just creating a safe place for other women who look like me, um, I would be able to help and heal. And even if it's just one person, that was always my goal. So in 2015, I just had this, I wanna help people, I wanna take pictures, let my story help someone else. That is so beautiful. And what I've learned as I've become more comfortable sharing my story is that there really is power in understanding that you're not the only person struggling with that. Yes, I so agree. Thank you for, for the transparency and the courage it takes to share your story. We need to normalize it more. If you do it, if I do it, then the next thing you know, the next brown or black or brown sister or just people in general will do it. Yeah. It doesn't need to be an abnormal thing, particularly in the black community to share. We got to kind of break that. Hello. Okay. So what are some of the stigmas you've experienced living with an invisible chronic disease? I feel like that people don't realize that it's there. You know, people look at me, they see this, they see the hair, they see the fashion or, you know, the extraness that I have going on. And it's like, girl, she's not sick. She's faking. It's not that bad. I deal with pain too. I am tired too. I can't remember things too. So you're too young to be sick. Uh, Black women's pain, physical in this sense, is not the same as everyone else's. Um, 
you don't need days off from work. Like I just dealt with everything around this not being real. And you start to internalize those comments and you really start to believe that the widespread chronic body pain that you feel is not real. That, you know, you not being able to walk or get out the bed or lift your arm is just like a psychological issue in your head. When in reality, my body is not like everyone else's. And I say this not to be dramatic, but it's not like someone who has a normal body who isn't in my um, health conditions. It's extremely hard for me to do things that for the average person is just your normal day, like walking, like lifting your arm, like having energy to brush your teeth, do your hair. So it's real. Yeah. And I will say um, the fact that it's an invisible disease, Mm -hmm. Um, I can definitely attest to that because I've known you for years at this point and I would have never known had we not had this conversation. So how can someone like me who can't see it, right? You present yourself well, you are friendly, you have energy, you know, how can we be more supportive um, when we meet people who are struggling with invisible diseases? I think education is number one. It's really important to educate yourself. And I'm not saying it has to be every day or every month, but if you learn about a friend, a loved one, a family member, a coworker, a colleague who has an invisible disease, just take the five minutes it is to read about the condition. We all have cell phones now who are for, I would say, 99% smart. It takes five seconds to Google, read educate maybe you want to share it on your social media pages maybe you want to share it with your family or friends not to kind of like tell that person's story but just to educate someone else because each one teach one we yeah. one we educate our community i would say one thing and then also just check in on your friend um i know that really helps me a lot when people just send me a text message how are you doing today what's going on and i know it becomes a little bit awkward particularly in my situation because i'm not the most open on one-to-one even though i'll do it on social media um and i don't always ask for help but with invisible diseases they are inconsistent so yes you do have some good days some good months but when you have those bad days those bad weeks those bad months they're bad yeah Yeah. just taking the five seconds to say hey how are you doing do you need anything can i bring you some food you need me to help clean up those would be my suggestions Perfect. So what are some of the biggest challenges you face um, living through the conditions you have? And if you can give us a brief overview, so educate us a little bit (laughs) on your um, conditions and what uh, the outside can look for. Okay, awesome. I will start with the condition I was diagnosed with first in 2016 at the age of 26. Um, which is mixed conjective tissue disease, or for sure MCTD, which is an autoimmune condition. So most people probably heard of arthritis and lupus, Mm -hmm. and those are autoimmune conditions like Mm -hmm. mixed conjective tissue disease. And what an autoimmune disease basically means is that your body mistakes healthy normal cells as invaders or bad cells and they attack them. So your body no longer can understand what's a healthy cell. So it's just attacking everything, honey. It's just like that. So, um, and with mixed conjective tissue disorder, it's that same thing, but it's attacking the framework of your joints or muscles. So I will have a lot of pain in my joint and muscle area with this disease, among other things. And mixed conjective tissue disease is also known as the overlap disease because it has um, symptoms of multiple autoimmune diseases, two being arthritis and uh, lupus. It's also really known as incomplete lupus. Um, My condition could eventually grow into lupus. Um, So it's kind of like I have a very high level of, let's just say, um, autoimmune in me for an easier way to put it. But when I go to take that further step to see if I have lupus, which I've been tested for lupus twice, this came back negative. But because I have such a high tier level in me, they call it misconjected tissue disease, which is, again, is an overlap condition and one of the diseases that uh, mixed congestive tissue disease mm-hmm. has um, symptoms of is uh, lupus. Moving oh. on to the second condition, which I was diagnosed with in 2018, mm-hmm. is fibromyalgia, which is not an autoimmune disease, but it's when your nerves overreact. They're very sensitive to pain and it affects your nervous system. So whereas a pinch for someone with a normal body system, you know, may hurt five, 10 seconds, 
with me, that sensitivity can last way longer, you know, because my nerves are just overreactive and very sensitive to pain. Okay. So both conditions overall deal with chronic pain, chronic fatigue, um, overall, overall general health not feeling well. Uh, on the fibromyalgia side, you'll see a lot of concentration issues, not being able to focus. Both you can see losing circulation in your hands and toes and feet. Um, those are kind of like the main symptoms that you'll see. Okay. And what was the first? Yeah, thing? I was saying, um, what were some of the challenges you faced living with those challenges? <laughs> the biggest challenge right now, and um, I'm in counseling dealing with this, is that I had to say goodbye to the way life was. I was a person that used to be on the go, like I'm going here, I'm going there, I'm involved in this event, whether it was sobriety, work, like I'm just about the business, like I get yeah. it done. But now I can't do that. Like there's times where I can sleep for 15 hours and it will feel like I have not got one hour of sleep because my body is so exhausted. There's times where I may have a event I would like to go to or work I would like to get done, but I can't physically lift my arm because I'm in so much pain. I can't walk because my knees, my toes, my thighs, my hips hurt, my waist hurt. I'm having abdominal pain. Um, you know, the medications also have side effects. So I feel like my, again, my life has changed physically. So that's also been really hard because of things that I used to be able to do just on the, being on the go, but then your daily washing, cooking, cleaning, I can't do. And then it affects your mental health because it's just like, how did I get here? I didn't ask for this. I'm having anxiety because I can't get anything done. I'm not as social as I used to be because, you know, of course, I like to look like this, but most time, honey, the hair is not done. It's dry. The face is like, says you need to exfoliate. It's just, <laughs> I would say those are the two biggest things. Like, um, I guess not being mobile and my mental health. Gotcha. And for the record, just let the record show. You look good, okay? <laughs> You yes. look blessed, okay? Shout out to the Because as you know, as females, or even males too, so shout out to the male callers listening to my sis mm -hmm. right now. Um, keep supporting her. When you look, when you get dressed up, you feel good. But when you yeah. just look bummy, and that's how I look most of the times, it just brings you down another level on top of the body pain, fatigue, losing circulation, kind of concentrate, memory issues, everything that you're already going through. Yeah, look good, feel good, do good. Absolutely. Okay, but I understand there's some days where you just can't get to step one. Well, no, it's just like, mm -mm, you're going to be able to do it, honey. Mm -mm, yes. I need to break deep. <laughs> okay, Let's, baby steps. One right. thing that I want to ask you about and inquire about, I know in the medical field, there's a lot of, um, there's challenge mm -hmm. of, medical professionals taking the pain of black women serious so i'm curious what your experience was particularly when it's an invisible disease that they don't have the like if you had a rash they could see that you know what i mean so considering it's invisible and there's already um challenges for black women's pain being taken serious what was your experience I think when I first was diagnosed, so I took the ANA test, which is the test you take to see if you have an autoimmune condition. I had a black woman primary care doctor. That was very important to me. Um, just in general, aside yeah. of chronic, issue, uh, chronic health issues, I wanted a black woman doctor. I felt with her, she was pretty open. I think she did have some curiosity if there was anything else like um, use of substances or alcohol going on just because I was young or something that I wasn't showing. Um, but once um, she gave me the diagnosis that I do have an autoimmune disease, I think she became very like, okay, your pain is real. Mm -hmm. When I went to my first rheumatology doctor, which takes care of my fibromyalgia and my mm -hmm. autoimmune condition, I it was it, ugh, it was trauma, as I like to call it, because it was just like, how did you score so high? Does lupus run in your family? Where does this come from? What do you do for a living? And it was very aggressive. Can you take off? You don't need to work. It was like all of this stuff and I'm just like. Can I ask her orientation? I mean, not her orientation, but her nationality. Oh. Non-black? 
it was non-black. It, it wasn't Caucasian either. So okay. it, I don't want to. Brown, but not black. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And then um, he was a, a PA, um, a physician assistant to the actual medical doctor who was a white male, who both of them were kind of doing the same thing. I always say her because she ended up taking over the case more and her bedside manner was worse. I mean, his wasn't good neither, but her, she was, this was horrible. And it just, it again added to people feeling, not feeling validated and not, and not that, because I know sometimes when you say that it can be used in a negative way, but I was feeling something, I was going through something and someone not validating my symptoms made me just feel more mentally like I was crazy or was, well, you don't have lupus and lupus looks like that and lupus looks like this. I don't know if anything's really wrong. Maybe you should. And it was just the whole, like I always say, I feel like I have three things working against me. I'm black, I'm a woman and I'm young. And particularly at that time, 31 now, still young to me, but it, it was hard to answer your question, and I feel like if I was a little bit older, Caucasian, um, I probably wouldn't have to deal with the issues that I dealt with. And it's like black women's pain don't matter. We're pill-seeking when it's not true. Systemic yeah. racism. Yeah, for sure. Um, so we're talking about perseverance today, and that has definitely been shown through your story. I'm curious, what does perseverance mean for you? I think for me in this very moment is believing that God has not forgotten about me. Um, and I know that's something I've been struggling with at the end of 2019 into this year, which kind of sent me into a depression, which I feel like, you know, it's coming out of, it's okay. just like, I felt like, God, you forgot about me. Um, because since September to now, my symptoms have been H-E-L-L, um, consistently, mainly every day. So it's kind of like I felt God forgot about me. So I had to reconnect with my faith and realize that God doesn't put more on you. God does not put more on you than you can bear. Right. And he's giving me this for a reason. I need to fight through this, yeah. continue to live, and chase my dreams. So perseverance is really just having faith, knowing that you manifest what you believe, not what you want. And I'm persevering because this is not it for me. You know, staying in the bed, being sick, not being able to walk, not being able to remember things, that's not the end for me. This is just a part of my journey. It's a part of the scenery, the scenic route that I'm on, but I'm getting to that golden glory, success place that I want to get to. So success yes. is God hasn't forgotten about me. Yeah. Well, person knowing that God hasn't forgotten about me. And I would like to um, be a little humble and apologize publicly. Um, you are my soul period. And I will do a better job of checking in. Oh, thank you. But I, no, I, people don't really get it. So I don't, you know, I don't take it personally. Yeah. But that doesn't mean I can't check in. Absolutely. <laughs> so moving forward. The best. Yes. Yeah. It's definitely and I thank you for saying that. Absolutely. I mean, definitely means a lot absolutely um and you know i i understand like because it's an invisible scenario sometimes um we tend to suffer in silence because it's invisible um and i know that's been my experience i, I suffer with depression um and grief and um i have in the past suffered from suicide attempts and a lot of times because there's no tangible like <laughs> you know um it's it, we're more likely to, to suffer in silence so um but when you know better you do better so i will be doing better moving forward thank you and thank you for sharing and it's great that we're both sharing our struggles with mental health because i'm sure as you know may is mental health awareness month and that's another thing in the black community sorry i yeah, uh, gotta do better People, but we got to do better. We need to talk about mental health more. We have to break the stigma. Absolutely. So what would you say is your number one secret to success? Um, I think knowing that I'm enough. Mm -hmm. Being in the social influencer, blogger world, just being a woman, just being a human, in the just social media world in general, we yeah. compare ourselves to other people a yeah. lot. 
you look at what they have, like, well, if I had that lighting or I had that camera, I'll be able to do this. And I don't want to make my post because it doesn't look like that. But I have to know that Vanessa, real name, or as I go by, Ness Monet is enough. Like, yeah. since this is all that in a bag of chips, honey. Okay. And it's like, I know that, but sometimes when you just get caught it's up in this. It's easy to get caught up. Yeah, you, you get blockers. Like, you can't see. So exactly. it's just knowing that Ness is enough absolutely that is such a good takeaway okay and i think we all need to remind ourselves of that like i'm dope in real life <laughs> period like okay. you need to see it because i see it and that's all that matters that's it that's it that's all yeah hello everything i do ain't on instagram i'm gonna be right. honest right. Right, 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 right. And it doesn't have to look like how someone else is doing yeah. it. Like, that's what I think when I really became true to what I wanted to do, focusing on health and travel and kind of doing the fashion thing, but it's kind of like through my traveling because mm-hmm. I realized that's what made, brought me joy and not trying to be your yeah. fashion that's Instagrammer. Really I'm like so happy. Like, this is my feed. If you don't want to look at it, you know, there's so many that's other okay. people. <laughs> that ain't no problem. Right, and then just putting whether it's on your phone, your planner, your to-do list, just putting little affirmations that like really helps. Like I have affirmations all over my health. Yeah. How? Same. I have them written on my mirror. I have you know notes. Yeah. Girl, I'm, with, I'm with you. You gotta constantly feed into yourself. Like self love, self care is so 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 important. Start there because if you do not start there, you'll it's never get to where you need to get to. Absolutely. So, what final thoughts do you have for us? Um, chase your dreams. Uh, it's never too late to start. It's never too late to make it happen. You know, my whole the scenic route journey is because I thought by shoot twenty five I would be married with kids, master's degree, okay. and honey, I know we're there. I mean, I do have my master's degree now, but everything else, or even financial wise. I'm not there, but it doesn't matter what age you get it because even if you get a master's degree at 50, you're amazing. If it's you get still married at 40, yeah, if you get married at 46, you're amazing. It's literally go after your dreams, believe in yourself, and know that you are an amazing human being. And I honor your, um, I honor your greatness. And I want to thank you so much for having me on this podcast. I appreciate the opportunity to connect with your fan base and your supporters. Absolutely. Girl, it's been my honor. Um, I just think, I think you're dope in real life, honestly. Oh, thank you. Same here really to you. Like, we was talking off, like, sis is popping. She's okay. been <laughs> going on. She got events. Make sure y'all are following her and support yeah. her with everything she has going on. We need, that's, I'm sorry. That's actually my last thought. We have to support each other more. We are want to work in silos so much, and that's not cool, guys. Like, we really got to support each other more, especially my Black women. Let's do better. Support your friends, your sore wars in 2020. Let's go. Absolutely. Good enough for all of us to win. Hello. And I think that's the, the beauty when you get... When you get that self-love down pack, we ain't got to compete. No, it's not a competition. I'm for you. And me. Yes. But it's okay. Like, I'm like, you know, I got my stuff going on and you got yours. And I'm like amazed at what you're doing. Like, it's great. Like, how, right. can, I, how can I help? How can I promote you? Because Absolutely. a Black woman win is a win for all of us. Like, we need to continue to push this Black girl magic in everybody's faces. Votes. I know we're not here to talk about that, but votes. But votes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we really need to just continue to push this blackness like we're amazing we need to support each other absolutely so where can everybody find you and see all your dopeness and and and, you know follow your journey throw it all out there let them know so the main place right now is on instagram which is at ness.monet which is m-o-n-e-t m as in mary O as an octopus, N as an A T E as in A T as in tree. So Ness.Monet on Instagram. And from there in my bio, you can get connected to my website. I'm currently building it up. Um, my Poshmark closet, Twitter, all there. You will find all of that information if you would like to um, connect with me via email. My email address is nestmonet at gmail.com. I look forward to hearing from you all, connecting with you. Y'all make sure y'all follow her, okay? 
Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the Chasing Dreams podcast. Yeah. Absolutely. And and speaking on um, the health of Black women, which is a conversation we need to do more often, physical health Absolutely. and mental health. Um, so yes. thank you for tackling both. Anytime. It's definitely something I'm very passionate about. Absolutely. Well, we'll see you next week, guys. Bye.